I feel like this movie is cheating. These kids didn't even go to Camp Crystal Lake. Hey everyone, it's me, Aaron. And I'm Michelle. And this is our post Shriek Out reaction, and we are still in the midst of sequel week. That's right, all week long we were reviewing sequels to horror films. So today we are tackling Friday the 13th Part 2, and I had never seen this film before. Uh, my history with Friday the 13th is weird, it's kind of like all over the place, I watched none of them in order. Uh, so there's still huge chunks in there that I've never actually seen. Um, I actually believe the first one I ever saw was actually the fourth one. So yeah, like I jumped in, like, chronologically, I mean, the first one I ever watched was Friday the 13th Part 10. So I had nowhere to go but up. <laughs> then I went back to like the fourth one, then the sixth one. Then last year, for post streak Out Reactions, we actually watched the first one. It was the yes. first time I ever watched it. And we shat all over that. <laughs> I, yeah, for anybody who saw the video that we did, you'll remember, I didn't like it. I thought that movie kind of stunk. Uh, so I went into this one kind of with really low expectations. I mean, it's a sequel. I didn't even like the original. I actually kind of like this one. Yeah, I was I had higher expectations for the second one since the second one actually does have you Jason. Know, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, wow, can you imagine if, like, Friday the 13th was all about Jason's mom instead of actually Jason? Just like continuing on? Yeah, exactly. Like, well, eventually she would have to get mutated into a giant zombie, too. Or yeah, something, like, but it's like, imagine, like, she was the main killer throughout the f throughout the franchise. Like, uh, that would be... that Jason? Kill them all? Like, oh, God. <laughs> I hated her. Enough. I kept saying, like, one of the reasons why slashers don't really scare me all that much is simply because... You know, I look at slashers, and don't get me wrong, in real life, it's not like I'd be able to fight back all that much, but, yeah, you can't help but look at uh, people in slasher films and it's like, run. Just, they're just a normal person. You can outrun them. And in Friday the 13th Part 1, I think that is the worst uh, candidate of that. That is the worst example of that. Because there is, like, a moment in Friday the 13th Part 1 in which our lone survivor girl, there at the end, is just there like, no, no, and... Mrs. Voorhees is walking up to her, doesn't have a knife or any weapon at all. She's like, ah, ah, I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. And she's in there, no, no. I was like, she's not even holding a weapon and she is a foot shorter than you and like got 40 years of age on you too. She is a little old lady. <laughs> Stand up, bam, in the horror movie monster. <laughs> but in this film, it's actually Jason who's going around. And I will say that they still screwed up on one thing with Jason, though, in this. Uh, this is the first time that Jason's ever been seen. So it was before he got the hockey mask. Before he had the hockey mask, he just had, like, a burlap sack with, like, one eye hole open on it. Uh, and he was wearing, like, suspenders. Um, not quite the horror movie icon that he eventually became. But he's also still pretty short. Like, they did not get, like, the big towering figure that would go on to play him in later films. Uh, like, he's definitely not Kane Hodder in this one. And there's a moment at the end of this film in which he is getting into a fight with the guy who's running the camp, and I couldn't help but look at it and go, the guy who's running the camp is taller than Jason. Not saying that immediately means you're going to win a fight. I'm a tall guy and I can't really fight. Most people who are shorter than me could probably take me out. But it doesn't, in movie terms, make him look all that intimidating. So, yeah, I had a slight, slight problem with that in this film. All right, let's go ahead and get into what this movie is actually about, and this shouldn't take long. It's set five years after the events of the previous film, which that's one thing that we have to bring up. The Friday the 13th timeline is straight to hell. Like, the Friday the 13th timeline, every single movie came out, like, the year after the previous film, but it would take him, like, five, six years into the future from the last film. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, this is kind of where that started, but, you know, they didn't know that every other film would continue that trend. Uh, so, it starts off five years afterwards, and the survivor from the previous film, uh, she's at home alone by herself, and you see her just walking around her home, and then eventually she is attacked and killed. Now, like, before that, she was having a nightmare. Yeah. Which is basically a reca recap of what it's happened. Just, yeah. yeah. just a previously at Camp Crystal Lake. Uh, yeah, it is literally just seen from the previous film, just like, here's all the things that happened. Uh, but she ends up getting killed, and then it then cuts to a brand new group of characters. And they're all going to work at another summer camp. 
And it's not Camp Crystal Lake. But it's close to it's it. The camp that's like the next camp over. Yeah. And like, okay, so it kind of seems dumb that you would do this like this close. But again, it's been five years. The person who was doing the murders was killed. Like, we know that, like, nobody else actually believes that, oh my god, Jason Voorhees actually jumped out of the water there at the end of the film. No, it was like, nope, it's Mrs. Voorhees. And we know that she was definitely, for a fact, murdered at the end of that movie. No questions on that one. So I was like, alright, I understand, you wait five years for all the bad press to die down, and you're not opening it at Camp Crystal Lake. It's the camp right next to Camp Crystal Lake. So... Yeah, okay. That's not yeah. that dumb of an idea. Yeah, Camp Crystal Lake now is called Camp Blood because of all the shit that's happened. Well, I think it was it was called that in the first one too, as like a like mocking term, just kind of like, oh yeah, we all call that place Camp Blood. Um, but uh, this stars a brand new group of people coming to be camp counselors at this camp, and yeah, it's basically from there the exact same thing as the first film. I mean, you even have Crazy Ralph yeah. come up to them and like, you're all doomed. Doom. <laughs> now be over here if you need me. Uh, yeah, it is basically the exact same thing as the first film all over again. Like, I have no idea how long this video is actually going to be. Yeah. It's like, hey, you kind of already saw all of her feelings about yep. this. Except, I actually like these people. I actually like every single one of these camp counselors. Uh, I... Don't remember much about the ones from the previous one, but that's because a lot of them just didn't have personalities, and a lot of their personalities were kind of shitty. And they pretty much all ended up dead anyhow, well, so... Well, yeah, it's going to happen in these films. Mm -hmm. um, but in this film, I actually remember their personalities, and I remember their interactions with each other. I mean, I kind of dig that this thing opens up with these uh, two of them are coming to the camp, and they think that they're... Uh, car is being towed, and they chase the tow truck all the way down to the camp. It's like, ah, uh, we own the tow truck. We were just messing with you guys. I'm like, okay, that's kind, of, that's kind of a fun thing. We see the we see the nice little bonding stuff going on between them. It's a, that's kind of a nice thing to put in there. And uh, there's like a nice little like romance blooming between like three different couples in here. And I was like, okay, they're actually all kind of sweet. I actually kind of like all these couples. Like, there's the one guy. Uh, he's in a wheelchair. And he used to be a pro athlete, not pro athlete, but like high school athlete. And he keeps talking about, yeah, man, I've got to keep working, got to keep working, got to keep staying fit. And I was like, man, that guy is showing dedication, showing that he is dedicated. Man, nothing's going to get that guy down. I really like him. I'm really on his side. And then there's a girl who totally has the hots for him. And you see them flirting back and forth. It's like, oh my goodness, they're actually... Oh, it's kind of some nice flirting action going on in there. That's, that's really kind of sweet. And then you've got the main girl in here, and she's kind of forming a thing with the guy who runs the camp. And I remember in the previous one, the guy who ran the camp was just kind of like, who gives a shit? Yeah. Like, this one, this guy actually feels like a responsible individual. Yeah. Like, there is a moment in which uh, two of the campers try and sneak into Camp Crystal Lake because they're like, oh, shoot, yeah, you heard about all the stuff that happened over there at Camp Crystal Lake. So they want to go and see, and then a cop ends up uh, stopping them and pulling them back and takes them back there and is like, yeah, what are you going to do? To wh What are you going to do to punish these kids? I can't remember the exact line, but it was something like, okay, guys, no seconds on dessert tonight. Like, just something very, like, playful like that. I'm like, okay, he understands. They're just kind of, like, going around. But then later on that evening, he actually does punish them. Yeah, it's like, all right, this is the last time we can go out and have fun. Who's yeah. with me? Not you two. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, you two, you got to stay behind and take yeah. everything here. It's like, okay, I, again, it shows that he will stick up for them around the cops. People try and come onto his camp, try and tell him how to discipline his staff. He'll go, nope, my staff is on my team. I am with them. I will handle them. Don't you tell, don't you, you know, badmouth my team. No, I'm on their side. But the moment they're gone, it's like, yeah, I do actually have to be a responsible individual and I actually do have to run this place. And I'm like, I really like this guy. Uh, he actually seems like the kind of guy you would want running a, a, a camp. camp. Yes, thank you. Uh, he actually seems like the kind of guy you would want as a camp counselor. Like, fun he understands he's on your side but he will be strict when he has to be it's like okay i'm i'm down i'm with this guy right now and even like the jokey guy in here who all these films have that jokey guy and he's typically a complete asshole i like the jokey guy in here i kind of found him annoying okay but... he's but... not don't get me wrong he's not my, my favorite in here and i understand people find him annoying but 
again. Like, like he's the, not as bad compared to like some of the other yeah. jokey guys in other movies. Like. Larry. <laughs> That's where mind's going to right now, isn't it? Uh, yeah, compared to like what you would typically find in one of these films, he's way better than them. I was actually genuinely stunned by how much I liked the people in this movie. And the kills, you know, I gotta give it to him on this one. You know, the Friday the 13th franchise is kind of known for being like super gory and bloody and stuff. These kills are really tamed. A lot of them happen off camera. And it kind of reminds me of like something kind of, this is the only time I'll ever compare these two franchises, but something kind of Hitchcockian. Where it's like, no, we're not going to show you the terrible thing happening. We're going to like just lead up to the terrible thing possibly happening and then we'll let your mind fill in what actually happened. It's like, that's far more... Um, terrifying than... Terrifying, but also uh, that's that shows so much more craftsmanship in this than anything else I've typically seen in the Friday the 13th franchise. Uh, I'm genuinely stunned by how much I enjoyed this movie. Uh, and then at the end of the film, Jason gets revealed and... I do kind of enjoy that it's kind of weird that there's no real explanation for how Jason survived being drowned as a kid. Uh, that's kind of bizarre to me, but it'd be even weirder if these camp counselors like somehow were able to figure that out because, I don't know, they searched through the old records over at Camp Crystal Lake or something. It's like, yeah, but you're not actually at Camp Crystal Lake. You're the next camp over, so yeah, I understand. Um, but I did enjoy that uh, at the end of this, the lone survivor girl actually tries to trick Jason, like she's actually using a brain. Yeah, I mean, like, I remember, like, some, like, like when the 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 counselors who were out at the bar, like, one of them was like, "I almost feel bad for Jason. Can you imagine, like, having your mother killed and just?" <laughs> okay, that was the scene that I did have a problem with because it was just like stopped to like lay out exposition. Like, yeah, I think I actually turned to you and went, "How does she know all this?" <laughs> Maybe she's just, like, a big fan of, like, uh, the legend. I guess technically it was all in the paper. Like, I guess technically you could research this. It's not, like, out of the realm of possibility. Like, it's not like she's got magical knowledge of Jason somewhere. No. But, yeah, it's... But it was just kind of weird that, like, the girl who would be the lone survivor at the end is the one who comes in here and goes, I have all this knowledge of Jason just, like, at my ray disposal. Uh, so, yeah, that was a little bit weird. But, yeah, again, it shows, like, that she knows about the character. So, so it would make able to sense for her yeah. to survive. Yeah, I have got like hairs like stuck in my glasses and it's driving me nuts. Sorry. Um, so yeah, I kind of enjoyed that there at the end. Uh, the moment at the end that it does though come down to like Jason having to fight them though, a lot of the tension went out of it for me because again, Jason is very mortal in this film. Mm -hmm. uh, he's not the big unstoppable killing machine that he is in all the other films. As I said, it's kind of weird that the guy running the camp is taller than Jason, and they're the ones that fight at the end of this. It really feels like he probably could have taken Jason. Like, if he had, had like, a better start there. Mm -hmm. If he had, had, like, better footing, he probably could have done. Yeah, so, you know, it's, uh, when Jason actually does show up and you actually get to see him, yeah, the film kind of drops for me a little bit, but it's not like I was ever hating it. I was still, like, invested. I was still in this film, but I gotta say, man, it's what I've been saying for a long time about horror films. The... Easiest way to make you get invested in a horror film, which is what you need to be in order to actually feel afraid for these characters, is make us actually like the characters. And I'm genuinely shocked that this movie actually did that. Uh, you got anything else to say before we give our score? Um, no, I don't really think so. Yeah, this is it's a very basic ass film. It is super it's basic. It's basic, but it does it well. Yeah. Like, it's I mean, it's at the time it probably wasn't that basic of a thing. At the time, this was probably still like, oh man, nobody's ever nobody's doing the kids go to a camp and get slaughtered thing. Uh it was probably after this that everybody started really jumping <laughs> on that bandwagon. But yeah, I'd actually give this like a 7.5 because it's not like it does anything like great. That makes me go, oh my goodness, I'm going to absolutely remember that part of the film. But no, I just enjoyed it all yeah. throughout. Like, it was just a genuinely good, fun horror film. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of that has to do with the characters. Yeah, um, and uh, I'd probably give it the same rating for the okay. same reasons. So. Okay, cool. The uh, spoiler corner, stuff we say at the spoiler here at the end, there's only really one spoiler thing, yeah. and it is to me kind of like a little bit of a negative to the film, is that it literally ends the exact same way that the first film ends with the lone survivor girl having a nightmare about Jason appearing in slow motion from behind her and grabbing her. I was like, 
We le- like that. That's not bad, but we literally did that in the last film. And, like, I like and the- it was better in the last film. Yeah, but I like the way that she tried to uh, trick Jason. I thought that was that's good. clever. Yeah. Yes, uh, we briefly touched on that, but yeah, the fact that she, when she finds Jason's shack, she finds that he has his mother's head and also like her, her sweater. sweater. So she puts the sweater on and tries to tell Jason that she's uh, uh, she's his mom, and it's like you've done a good job. You can go. Which kudos to that actress on returning because I know that actress hated Friday the Thirteenth. Mm-hmm. She said that movie was awful. <laughs> so the fact that she was willing to come back for it, like, all right, good on you. I always appreciate an actor who, even if they don't like the material, is willing to show up and work. Uh, but yeah, so that's really the only spoiler thing for it. But that's it. This is probably a very short episode, but there wasn't really much to say about this one. I'm just genuinely shocked that I actually enjoy this film. Yeah, like, I kind of... I'm genuinely shocked this is probably my favorite Friday the 13th film right now. Like, I feel like this is, like, when, like, the franchise, like, starts to get rolling. Because, like, I kind of feel like the first one was more like a prequel. Like... It feels like that should be Friday the 13th Part Zero. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, like, it feels like that would be the kind of thing that someone would make these days after yeah. they had already had a successful Friday the 13th franchise. It's like, we've kind of killed Jason off way too many times. What happened before Jason got there? Like, mm-hmm. that kind of a yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. What happened to his mom? Like, that's the kind of thing. Uh, so yeah, that was it. Uh, thank you guys for to- joining us for a very chill post shriek out reaction. Uh, make sure that you join us the rest of this week in which we are talking about brand new, oh, not brand new. Sorry. We just did another show that ended with me saying that. Um, join us for the rest of this week in which we are talking about more horror films, doing a review every single day. But also I've got some top tens coming up later today. We've got the comic book, uh, creepy comic book show coming up tomorrow. This is like the third episode that we have recorded in a row right now, and I'm very tired, so I'm just going to bow out right now while I'm ahead. Get it? Because, like, Jason's mom was just ahead at the end of the film. Yeah. And happy Halloween. Oh, yeah, that. <laughs>